afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Toad TV. Cheers. Cheers. I do have hot tea. Uh, today is Thursday. Thursday, right? Thursday. All day? Yep. Thursday. Oh my gosh, can you believe Monday is February 1st? I know. Ugh. New Yarn coming. coming. New Yarn coming. We have so much New Yarn coming. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. All right. Um, we are, well, I'm Mary Beth. I'm Helen. And we are the creative hands and minds behind Toad Hollow. And lots and lots and lots of questions about the cake yesterday. Yes. Because we didn't have the cake. We knew we were dying yesterday. So the podcast was filmed prior to the cake. Right. So, but. Never fear. If there's a day called chocolate cake, there, there will, will be chocolate, chocolate cake. cake. <laughs> okay. So, just very quick. We're gonna have the, the tasting bite. Completely to the side. So I don't eat the whole thing because it's so good. So, so it good. is the chocolate and orange cake by Olive and Mango. They're a, blog, a food blog. I was not familiar with them, but a friend of ours sent it to us and said it was a huge hit in their house, so we decided to try it. Oh my God. She said that her husband was on the way down. They <laughs> lived two hours away. But he was on his way down for a slice. Um, this is the moistest cake, chocolate cake I've ever had. Not just what I've made, but I've ever had. Yeah. It is so good. Does it use any butter in the recipe? In the cake? No. Right. It's no, all it's, oil. It's vegetable the... oil and then very, very hot orange juice, which I think probably plays a, a factor in it. I think the vegetable oil is the main thing. But oh, my God. So somebody asked us um, whether you can actually taste the orange. A little bit. Oh, I think you can, yeah. full on. It has, a, as Helen said, a full cup of orange juice in the cake batter. There is a quarter cup of orange juice in the icing. There's orange extract in the in cake both, batter. In both, right? I didn't, just, put, I didn't put it in the uh, okay. icing. Um, um very, very, very good. But it's not like overpowering orange. It's no. just like the slightest, ooh, there's a little bit of orange in there. Um, we squeezed the oranges to do it so that we, we used fresh squeezed orange juice. Right. And it was... Ugh. There's a bit of pulp in the it's cake, okay. which is good. Yeah. Yeah. So It's really divine. Oh, it is so good. And so, it's a buttercream cheese chocolate icing. So good. With orange. <laughs> Heather. That's for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just so much fun. <laughs> okay. Careful. Are you right? You good? All right. Ah. Anyway. Tabitha is now in the room, so hopefully all the growling <laughs> will stop. Anyway, we're going to keep going because I have one, Give me these books. <laughs> one dog who is just like tracing the shadow that's reflecting off a book that we're holding and a cat that is eyeing my cake <laughs> malevolently. So <laughs> we need to keep moving. Uh, lots and lots of co comments about the quilting. We got uh, DMs and emails and everything about the English paper piecing. Um, thank you guys so much. Yes. You guys really nice things to say. So there were a couple of people that had questions about it and we thought we'd answer some of them. Um, so let's see. Um, okay. Uh, Sighthounds Galore said that uh, she wanted to know about our preferred needles and thread. All right. I have my little basket that Teresa gave me and um, I keep all my English paper piecing stuff in here. Our needles that we use are number 10 big eye applique needles from Hiroshima, Needle Hiroshima Needles through Tulip. That is what we use. I will put links down below to everything um, so that uh, you can go see exactly what we use. Um, our... Preferences are all based on our good friend Tula yes. and what she told us to use. Right. So, um, we just don't deviate from that. And then the thread we use is we use Aurafil thread. Aurafil 50. Aurafil 50 weight. We have a couple of different colors. So as we're doing different color pieces, we use different color um, threads. Yeah, generally uh, what I do for my thread is I try and match the lightest piece as much as possible. Right. 
So if it's a, a light blue, right now I'm uh, sewing light blue to black, so I'm using a light blue thread. I um, have been putting in white hexes around some of my flowers, so I was using white for that. Right. Um, we did have, oh, okay, let's see. Um, another question from Chickadee Baby. She said that she has such a dreadful time threading the needles so that she uh, tends to avoid hand sewing as a result. Um, this says that it's got a large eye. Yeah, that's a joke. Don't. <laughs> it does not have a large eye. It has a teeny, tiny, tiny eye. However, I think it's a large eye compared to other hand sewing needles. Um, but go ahead. Sorry, uh, you were going to talk about... Oh, no, 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 no. Popping. No, go ahead. Um, go. Oh, okay. So you th uh, the best way to thread, because th thread has a direction. So if you, um, if you thread from the wrong direction, you're going you're gonna to shred the thread. Um, so if you thread before you cut from the spool, you're, you know you're threading from the right end. And what I generally do is before I start threading is I'll snip the, the end and I'll snip it at an angle. And that seems to work the best for me. Um, so you take it, before you cut it from the, th the spool, you just thread it through your needle. Right. And I have um, terrible eyesight and my eyesight is getting worse. However, for the most part, I can get it threaded. Yeah. So it's a, it's a technique that works. So I have learned to don't cut it off the your bobbin until you actually thread it through. Right. And the other thing with English paper piecing and thread is... Um, don't cut like, you know, a yard. Cut a, a small piece. It's, it's generally like a half arm's length um, is the what um, they say. Because the more you pull it through the different f the fabrics or, and you know, sometimes inevitably you go through the paper, you're weakening the thread. So that if you unthread your needle and you're, uh, you know, two thirds of the way done the length that you've cut, you're never threading that again because the, the thread is so overworked that it just, it won't go through the tiny little eye. So you just throw the thread out and get a new thread. And because, One thing, I mean, I have spent time like, oh, I'm not, I have to stop sewing because I can't thread the damn needle today. And then I'm like, oh, get new thread. And right. as soon as I get a new piece of thread, then it goes right in. Because as our good friend Tula says, the thread in the overall scheme of things, there's no shortage on thread. It's not that expensive. So, if you are like me and you have a piece that is approximately that long left, you think, I will continue using yeah. this. However, if it has come unthreaded more than once, throw it away. It's right. not that expensive and you will save yourself a whole lot of bother and exasperation because um, just think of it as your mental health that you're saving. So just throw the thread away. Okay. And I Two or three times a day, you'll hear, there's no shortage on thread yeah. as we're cutting the thread. Okay. Um, Chickadee Baby also wanted to know what is our preferred um, glue for English paper piecing. We use the Soline Fabric Glue Pen. It comes like this. The top pops off. It's a twisty thing. It's got blue glue in it. I'm like, just about done. I need to put in a new one. And it's the easiest but, thing in the world to refill it. You pop that out. You literally just pull that out, push the new one in, and then go to town. And this just, the top goes on the back, and then you just glue it. And it's, it's, it's very clean. It's very easy. Right. It really is. It's not overly sticky, so you're not sticking to everything if you get some on your fingers. Which will in inevitably happen. And um, you don't want it to stick permanently because you want to be able to pull the paper right out again so that um, the, uh, you want something that is tacky so that it holds the fabric to it but is not, like, bonding it for... Room. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, this is a good one. So it's a Soline Fabric Glue Pen. And it dries clear. It's water-soluble. It's just... It's a great thing to have. So we have... Um, a couple of, I have refills and it comes with a pen and refills in the package and then you can get refills separately as well so that you can just keep going. 
I saw, um, you know, our good friend Tula's Tula talk the other day when she was showing her bags. Mm -hmm. That she has one whole section of her bag that is that just, just the refills for yep. the glue pen. Because she goes through them so quickly. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Lydia Joy says, um, fussy cutting. She was hoping to see us pull one of the pieces of paper out. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but she says she assumes they come right off. They do. They pop right out. You just uh, you lift back, lift out the, one of the seam allowances and just pull it right out. And that is going to what Mary Beth was saying about how the glue is not permanent. Right. Um, also, so, if you do go through it um, once or twice with a piece of thread, it's almost like you're perforating it. Say. It pulls right out. Yeah. So we have never had any kind of problem with that. Um, but you generally don't pull them out until your piece is completely surrounded. So you don't need to sew anything else to that piece. Right. So that is why you didn't see us pulling anything out. Um, what we do is we make sure that, as Helen said, it's completely surrounded because anything that you're trying to sew to a piece of fabric without the paper inside it, the fabric is so floppy, it's hard to keep it straight. Yeah. So um, you need the paper inside it. Um, okay, so Verge says that um, she loves that we would never hand sew the way <laughs> we would never die hard. And now she's suddenly looking for books on Amazon and looking through her fabric stash. Fabric stash. So um, hold on, Verge, because we're going to help you with that. Um, Heather says she needs to set up her craft room so she can finally see where, what she needs to start things. Heather, why wait? Just, we don't. Yeah. We just move piles from one table to another and keep going. I just, you know, oh, well, that room's done. Right. Moved in there. <laughs> I don't really. Oh, uh, there are times it feels like it. Uh, Ouija woman says, okay, you need a Sizzix machine, but be warned, it could be a new addiction. I, I responded. We yeah. have two. Okay. Plus a uh, silhouette electronic cutting machine. And an AccuQuilt. Mm -hmm. So, um, that ship We've sailed. got that covered. <laughs> Sadly, that ship has sailed. Okay, um... Sharon Wolfgang said that she has been thinking about doing it for a long time now, but has not made the jump. She's watched lots of videos. And do we have suggestions on beginner booker patterns of things to start with? Also, she doesn't want to work with tiny little pieces. And she did see that some of the templates come in larger pieces. So I will turn this over to you as far as books, because I think that's pretty much it as far as the questions. So we'll wind up with the books. Okay. So I have two, um, the first one is quilting on the go, English paper piecing. Again, we Here, will do you want me to hold that? link these, uh, down below. And, um, I chose this one because it's got lots of smaller projects in it so that you're not, you know, if, if you just want to test it out, you're not starting with the quilt, um, you know, something like that. That's not the smaller project, that's the quilt. Um, but they have, this one has like table runners. Um, look at the mini quilt so that you're just sewing hexes together and getting used to it because hexes are, seem to be the standard. Um, You've got the straight sides and everything kind of all, it's very easily pieced together. So if you start with like this mini quilt, um, and you get to learn and you get to make bees. So that was this one. I think there was, oh, there's a little bag. So lots in this one to try different shapes, different uh, projects. There's a little, journal cover so you don't have to start with the Sistine Chapel which is what I generally yeah do. okay so do you want to hold that up again so oh, okay so quilting on the go English paper piecing this is the first one I bought okay and then we have this one again has lots of smaller projects it's English paper piecing a stitch in time and this one's just pretty. Um, so, again, smaller projects. 
I'm gonna make a mouse pin cushion. Um, just make a couple of hexy flowers and then you just uh, sew them onto hand towels. So these are just great for um, testing it out. This is a, a doll quilt. So you make a very small little quilt and then you can size it up for when you're, you've decided that you really do like this. And then they're just, they're so pretty. This one uses a lot of Liberty fabrics. So. It's hard to go wrong with Liberty fabric. <sighs> I really need to live in the UK because Liberty fabric in the United States is so expensive. So. As far as um, the size of the pieces, they come in all different sizes. Um, and you can get them anywhere from an inch to like five inches mm -hmm. or six inches. They really come in all sizes so that you can make it um, start with what's comfortable for you. We started with um, one and a half. They say it's an inch and a half hexi, but with the hexes, they measure along the side of it, not across. So the actual hexi we're working with is three inches across. It's an inch and a half along one side. So uh, when I'm doing my flowers, um, I don't think I have any of them in here, but this is one of them cut out. So that's about the size. It's not an actual hexi because I don't cut it out into the shape. I cut it out into the general sh uh, size that I need. And then she hasn't basted it to the, I take my, yeah. so that's the three inch one, but then I will put this in the middle like so. You can barely see it, but I will put it in the middle, fold the page, the sides over and uh, glue it on and then sew it to whatever I'm doing. So, um, I yeah, will say the, the smaller the pieces, the fewer the stitches. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think that answers most of the questions from yesterday. So if you have any others, please let us know. We'd love to help out wherever we can. We are not professionals at this. We are just starting, but... Just we are diving we in yeah. full, you know, feet first, gung-ho, so that um, you can come with us. Yeah. All right. Um, tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a shop update, and it's not what we thought it was going to be, but... But it's wait. beautiful no matter what. Right. No, wait. nonetheless. We have a, a new color and a new mini skein set. That's going to be tomorrow. Monday will be the new um, Alice yarns for February. Um... February, February 4th is our first presentation for Knit and Escape next week. And we have Galentine's Day uh, yarn and minis that will be pre premiering then. Um, and then February 5th, we are doing Stitches at Home. And our first presentation for that is February 5th. And that is Bridgerton will be premiering. Yes. So, lots of new stuff. Yeah. Um, very excited. Tomorrow. A lot of new colors. Yeah. Tomorrow, new color and new minis. Right. So, and there's a story. Because there's always, always a story. A story. <laughs> However, it's a it's look a, into. It's a how this, you know. How we do things. This dying thing just never works the way you think it's going to. Right. So. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it comes out perfectly. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we hope you guys have a great rest of the afternoon. Yes, go forth and create. And we will see you have tomorrow. Have chocolate cake. Okay. <laughs> see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.